In this video, we'll have a detailed discussion on the blocking and non-blocking assignment statement. Blocking and non-blocking assignment. So this one, this equal to sign, this is what we call as a blocking assignment and this one is what we call as a non-blocking assignment. So similar ones they exist in VHDL also there this is called a signal assignment and this one is called a variable assignment something similar okay, there, there will be two dots also anyway so let's take an example then let me try to explain it okay so i want to design a circuit something like this so i have one flip-flop here and another flip-flop here both of them they are connected to same clock source and here let me give some input let's call i to the d input here and the output from this flip-flop that is fed to the input of next flip-flop and his output that's what i am taking as a final output okay now let's try to describe the circuit in video so how will you write let's omit reset and roll so we'll simply write always at forsage clock okay like we saw last time we need to write the output of this flip-flop is input okay so this output it should be given some name intermediate name so you can see this is some wire in between we have seen this before also so let's call this intermediate wire as let's call it g okay so i can write like g is i okay so from the expression itself you can see uh, like in the last video i mentioned the left hand side of non-blocking assignment will always represent the output of some flip-flop so g is some output of flip-flop that's what this is saying okay now what we need to say o is g okay. o is g so this shows like o is the output of another flip-flop and the input to that flip-flop is g okay so this is how the code will look like now you will have to declare g this intermediate wire i o clock they will be all declared as input output so o will be of course declared as output reg time okay now g should be also declared now uh, when we use wires in our combination circuit assignment statement before gate level modeling also remember we declared it as wire to represent like that is an intermediate wire okay so here also physically you can see uh, g is some kind of wire but we have a rule all the signals on the left hand side inside always block should be declared as reg type so when you declare it you have to declare it as a reg type, not as wire type. So this is how it will look like, reg G. Now let's look at the description once again. So we are basically saying on every positive edge of the clock, what should happen? I should propagate to G and G should propagate to O. Okay, so let's take an example. So I have the clock here. Uh, this is our clock. We have I okay so let me draw i something like that i is coming from the external world so it can change at any point in time anyway let's draw it like this it may change on the clock edge itself or it can change whenever he wants now based on this expression g should get the value of i on the positive edge of the clock so this is our i so where is our g this is our g so what will happen on this positive edge i is zero so g will get zero itself on this edge i is one so g will become one 
on this edge i is still 1 so g will remain 1 on this edge i is 0 so g will become 0 and so on and so forth now what about o we have written o should get the value of g on the positive edge of the clock so what will happen on this edge what is the value of g remember although g is changing on the clock edge value of g on the clock edge is still zero so o will remain zero here and here here g is one so o will become one here g is not zero g is one after clock edge it is becoming zero so o will remain one on the next clock edge here g is zero so it will become like this okay so what you are seeing O is one clock delayed, right? O is one clock delayed compared to G. And similarly, G is actually one clock delayed version of I because I started somewhere here. You will feel like I is slightly longer in duration. That is true. If I changed exactly on this clock edge, suppose this is also some synchronous signal. This is also changing on the clock. If that were the case, you will see like G is nothing but a delayed version of I. So one takeaway is if you want to include delay in your signal, you can simply put flip-flops in between so one flip-flop will include one clock delay so depending upon how many clock delays you need you keep on chaining the flip-flops you will get those many number of delays now why this assignment got the name non-blocking okay so this is where our traditional software and hardware uh, difference is coming okay in software if you wrote something like that let's say like g equal to i o equal to g and somebody told like if i equal to one what is the value of o you will say like this i value will go to g so g will become one then g value will go to o so o will be also become one that's how we feel okay but look at the case here so on this clock edge g is becoming one but although i wrote O is G, O is not becoming 1 and O is getting the value of G only on the next clock edge. Reasons we already discussed. Okay, So O is getting only on the next clock edge. So it is as if O is getting the previous value of G on this clock edge. So this is as if this assignment statement is not blocking O from getting the value of g that is how uh, we are simply calling it non-blocking the new value in i will not be going to o and o will be getting the previous value of g so that is what is indicated by non-blocking statement non-blocking assignment statement now suppose i modified my code using blocking assignment statement okay so here i wrote something like that g is i using this assignment and o is g so what does it mean this basically means first it's same on the positive edge of the clock so the signal values they are going to change only on the positive edge of the clock so this assignment this blocking assignment basically means g's value is i sounds like what we discussed before but the difference is previously when we use this assignment g's value will become i on Postage, although we say postage, it will become i's value after t plus delta t time. For example, on this clock edge, if you ask me what is the value of g in our previous discussion, when you are using non blocking assignment statement, you will say on the clock edge, g is still 0, after clock edge, delta t time, g becomes 1. Okay, but if you are using this one, blocking assignment, g's value on the clock edge itself is 1. G's value is 1 here. So here also G's value is 1. No confusion. Here on this edge G's value is 0 not 1. So that's the difference uh, between blocking and non-blocking. So can you guess how the signal will look like? 
So G will look something like this itself when I draw it. What about our O? So previously we made O0 here because G's value on the edge is 0. But now G's value on the edge is 1. So O will get that value. So this will become 1 like this. Here it is 1. And on this clock edge, G's value is 0. So O will also get something like this. So this is how the signal will look like. Does this represent this circuit? No. So what does this circuit represent? You will see like G and O, they are essentially same signal. So this circuit is actually this one. So we have clock here. We have I here. We have G here and G and O. G goes to O. Okay. And G and O are essentially same signal this one and you still have to declare g as rh type because it's on left side or as rh type because that's also on left side but essentially g and o they are same point in your circuit now can you tell me why it is called blocking it is called blocking because o's value is blocked until g gets i's value so g is updated with i's value then O is updated with the new value of G. That is why we call it as a blocking one. So in the previous case, uh, it is not blocking. G will get I's value and O will get the previous value of G. So this new value of I is not blocking O from getting its value. But this looks like uh, O cannot get its new value until G gets the new value from I. So that's how the name is coming. Now, is this a good design practice? No. Usually, uh, it is not encouraged to mix blocking and non-blocking assignment statement inside same always block. So previously, we mentioned synthesizable weightlock, right? Some weightlock which can be actually implemented on hardware. So some of the implementation tools, uh, they will tell you like you cannot do it. You cannot mix blocking and non-blocking. You should either consistently use blocking or consistently use non-blocking. Okay, some tools will say like that, but other tools they are smarter they can implement it but you wanted something like that you wrote something like this instead of this this is what is going to get implemented so there are no syntax error but this is kind of semantic error right you wanted this one but you wrote like this and you got this one now suppose uh, you go wrote something like this g is i o is g what will get implemented Again, you can follow the logic. So G will get the value from I, but still that should happen only on the positive edge of the clock. So that will automatically infer a flip flop and G equal to O. So this is again same as this circuit, no difference. Now if you write something like this, I's value should go to G on the positive edge, but after the edge and O equal to G. So how will it look like? Okay, let's see. Okay, so this part is exactly same as before. Now, O equal to G. So, O will get the new value of G. So, what is the value here? 0. So, what is the value here? So, remember here we used non-blocking. So, the value of G here is still 0. That will immediately go to O. So, O will be still 0. Okay. Here, no confusion. 1. Here, G is 1 because of again non blocking after clockage it becomes 0. So it is 1 here, so it will be 1 here like this. This is same as this circuit. Okay, but still it is better you always write your code like this if you want to uh, implement this circuit. The previous one is still quite confusing, okay, although you get the same circuit. So better when you are designing synchronous circuit, you consistently use non-blocking assignment state. There are certain cases where we may mix them, okay, but special cases we will uh, discuss later. Otherwise, we will be consistently using this non-blocking assignment statement inside synchronous circuit design. Now let me 
quickly simulate this and show you whatever we discussed is true. So I have already uh, written the code. This is the case we discussed first. I is G, G is O. Okay, so let's run the clock. So clock again, the nanosecond. I, let's make it zero first. Okay, and let's run like five nanosecond. On this negative edge, let me make I as one. Okay. You can see that propagated to G on the next positive edge, okay, and on the next positive edge that reached O. Now they will remain like that. Now I am making I as low. Let's make on a positive edge. Okay, I became zero, but nothing happened to G because I is still one on this clock edge. Here, G became low on the next post edge, O became low. So you will see like this G and O, they are similar signals, but delayed by one clock signal. Now let's change it. Let's make it like this. And we need to recompile. And let's restart. Okay. On the falling edge, let me make I as one. So G will get the value of I on the next rising. But look at O. O also got the value of G as one. Because as we discussed before, this basically says G's new value is one at the clock edge itself. It's not after delta t time. So O is going to get this updated value of G, not the previous value of G. Okay, so then they will remain like this. And on the rising edge, I'm making I zero. Can you guess what will happen? Whether G will get zero here? No. The value of I is still one on the clock edge. So G will be one, O will be one. But on the next clock edge, okay, here G will become zero. Because of that, O will also become zero. Yeah. Now the last case we wrote like this here and like this here. We compile. We start. So you can copy paste these commands for generating clock and all. So you can see this is the command for making clock and making i as zero okay so let's run it and on this falling edge let me make i as one okay here g got one only on the next clock or became one okay. so it is effectively same as our first circuit Okay, so I hope you have better idea about blocking and non-blocking assignments. Thank you.